subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. What is another week in 2020 if there's no over the top terrifying news for the world? This week, amidst the raging frenzy of record breaking wildfires and crazy freak weather events, there's another new report of a catastrophic decline in wildlife populations globally. According to these new findings, wildlife populations have fallen by more than two-thirds in just the last 50 years. In this episode, we're going to discuss the report, its findings, the population studied and the reasons behind this terrifying decline in numbers. My name is Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. The Living Planet Report is prepared jointly by the World Wildlife Fund WWF and Zoological Society of London. It is WWF's flagship publication released every two years and is a comprehensive study of trends in global biodiversity and the health of the overall planet. Data was collected from 1970. Animal and other species monitored, trends studied, patterns and inferences were drawn. All of this was done with data set from 1970 to 2016. The report was released in 2020. This edition is the 13th edition of the report and provides the scientific evidence and quantification of human impact on environment, other species and biodiversity. According to the Living Planet Report 2020, Populations of mammals, fishes, birds, amphibians and reptiles have declined an average of 68% between the years of 1970 and 2016. This is among a study of 21,000 animal and other populations. The worst of this decline was observed in Latin America and the Caribbean region with an average decline of 94% among vertebrate populations. Africa has seen a decline of 65% of populations in this time period. The Asia-Pacific lost 45% of its vertebrate population in these four and a half decades. And Europe and Asia show a loss of 24%. Globally, freshwater species have also declined by a whopping 84%. This 84% decline is the starkest average population decline in any biome. Populations of migratory freshwater fish species have declined globally by 76% on average, including a 93% collapse in Europe. These populations are declining at an average rate of 4% per year. The underlying cause for this population decline, according to the report, and generally and unsurprisingly, is of course human species and human activity. In the last 50 years, the massive growth of human interconnectivity, land use, consumption, urbanization, environmental degradation, and of course not to mention global heating, has led to wide-scale deterioration of nature and has led to species decline. There has been a disastrous impact on biodiversity globally because of human activity. According to the LPI report, which will be linked in the description below, the main cause of the dramatic decline in species populations on land observed in the LPI is habitat loss and degradation through changing land and sea use. This includes deforestation driven by how we as humanity produce food. This is followed by the overexploitation of species which is leading to practices like unsustainable fishing and animal farming. Introduction of invasive species, both flora and fauna, and disease is also a major driver of species population decline. Two other important causes are pollution, again caused by humans, and climate change, again caused by humans. The report also outlines biodiversity loss according to geographical regions, although not in too much detail. In the Asia-Pacific region, including in India, habitat loss was the biggest cause as well as species overexploitation and invasive species and disease. The report also laid out factors that increase the global risk of pandemics like the ongoing COVID-19 and two of the major drivers for this seem to be land use change again and wildlife trade. Also impacting the vulnerability to pandemics is climate change and pollution, of course. 
among all kinds of animals as expected megafauna or larger animals were more vulnerable to all of these factors these include even larger fishes whose migratory routes to feeding grounds or breeding grounds tend to get blocked by human activity the report took the example of a single species to demonstrate how human activity can impact populations in the chinese sturgeon fishes which are found in the yangtze river populations decreased by 97% in this time period because of the construction of dams alone globally the data is large consolidated and terrifying However, at a more granular level, the interpretation of this data becomes more difficult and less accurate. For example, India as a country has a significantly higher biodiversity reserve than other places, and WWF experts have themselves too admitted that the lack of data from India has made it difficult to be very precise about the nature and scale of biodiversity loss in the country. But this doesn't mean we don't have any data. We do. Kailash Chandra, who is the director of Zoological Survey of India, told Down to Earth, also linked below, that out of about 1.02 lakh animal species in the country, as found in India till December 2019, about 6,800 are vertebrates. Among these, nearly 550 fall in critically endangered, endangered or vulnerable categories. India has lost 12% of its wild mammals, 19% of amphibians and 3% of birds. Almost 85% of wetlands have also been affected due to urbanization and human habits as well as agriculture and pollution. There is also a lot of pesticide and insecticide use in India which is wreaking havoc with the biodiversity. The reports India highlights also showed how forest land is being reallocated especially the parts that contain ecologically sensitive wildlife habitats. Additionally, in India specifically, adding to the chaos is habitat fragmentation where forests tend to get split up into regions because of human constructions like road or other settlements. This tends to isolate animals into pockets, cutting off access to other animals of the species and then leading to inbreeding and a declining population health. And this isn't really a problem that is going to be solved by just increasing greenery. Adding to all of this is of course climate change. This takes it to a whole other level of complexity and confusion. Climate change exacerbates biodiversity loss, of course, but biodiversity loss also worsens climate change. For example, deforestation increases greenhouse gas emissions. So the report makes the key point that it is essential that the climate and biodiversity crises are addressed together, especially now that pandemics are also thrown into the mix. The report and all experts constantly stressed on urgent and imperative global collaborative action needed to halt this rapid impact of human activity on the world and to reverse the loss of biodiversity. Experts say that now there's increasing evidence that human health depends on this as does the survival of our own species.